It's Open House Thursday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Mariah Afolabi Brown. With me are the co hosts. How are you doing, ladies? Good to see you. Yeah, Jalil. Good to see you. We'll be seeing each other. <laughs> oh, How's everything? Yeah, great. So some people have been asking me that they've been looking for House of BC, here by BC on social media, that they can't find it. Yes. So what happened was I had to consolidate all my business pages to one so that I don't have different, different pages scattered all, all over the place. Mm. So right now, if you are looking for my products, you just go to BC's Business Empire. Everything is there. The hair, Empire. the clothes, the snacks, everything I'm coming up with is going to be there. If you're looking for the consulting, that's the aspect of the teaching, you just go to Bisuch Consult Media. Mm. And that's it. You see everything there. So I just have two business pages on social media. Yes. So please, I'm still very much on Instagram. I danced for you people yesterday. You did not see my dance. You saw it. <laughs> Shake your my something, something. You said, I tried you know. for you guys. <laughs> just you it. <laughs> How you doing? Mm. Okay, I'm fine. I'm fine. I want to congratulate my friend. I call him Officer Ishaku. So he got the promotion. He's a soldier. Ah, and he's nice. been very, very kind and nice to me at the Ojo Barracks because I have to find my way to my parents' place. And... Um, when I got the news that he's been promoted, I knew he went for a course and he just came back. He'll be decorated today. Oh. I will try my possible best. Traffic not uh, standing to get to that oh. um, celebration today. Congratulations, congratulations um, um, Officer Ishaya Biliamino. Call him Ishak. <laughs> How you doing, Mariam? I love Bye. your jacket. Thank you. Nice. My cardigan. Oh, I love yeah. it. Thank you. I didn't even notice that just now. Yeah, thank <laughs> you. Very much. Uh, very <laughs> um, so, uh, <clears throat> I've been talking about the Akada Children's Book Festival coming up on Saturday. Please be there. Be there. It will be fun for the children and for um, families too. Like the whole family will have something to do. It starts from about 8 and I'll be doing a book reading about 3 p.m. on that day. But then it's a whole day of fantastic good fun there'll mm. be books there'll be authors there'll be book chats book readings um fitness fun you know uh, it's at um upbeat center in like yeah you know they do all the trampoline things yeah. so there'll be all that lots of fun there'll be sip and paint as well you know just so many things fun then there'll be uh, master classes talking about um really talking about like mental health understanding mm. your children your children understanding you you know back and forth Classes that involves you and your children being in there and then learning to know them better. And it just opens your children, you know, to this whole world of books and real important conversations, mm. content that you'd be so proud of that your children would assimilate and just mm. imbibe. So please be there on Saturday and be at my book reading by three. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Good, well, good, 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 good. And it's, like, it's Thursday, you I know. I feel like I'm falling, like I need my seatbelt. I don't know, I think I've been strapped too long. You need a pillow to lift no, you. I'm okay. Just, I've, I've been feeling something that I'm missing my... You've you been strapped in traffic for too long. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get that. <laughs> like some yes. trauma. You've strapped in your car for too long. Anyways, it's Thursday. It's our Justin Day. So I'm told that our viewers on DSTV and GoTV Channel 45 in the course of today's show would have to switch to a live broadcast of Governor J Babajide Sanwo lose 2023 budget presentation at the Lagos State Assembly at some point. So just letting you know ahead of time, just in case we have to switch over. Let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll go through the front pages of the papers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're going to start with the nation. PDP crisis or Tom attacks Atiku as Mimiko rejects job. Security alert. No reason for evacuation of U.S. citizens. CBN changes narrow notes. Court dismisses suit seeking Abiodun's disqualification. Court to Kogi, don't disrupt Dangote's operations. Marketers raise petrol price to 179 uh, Naira from 169 Naira. No admission offer has been cancelled, says Jam, an online lotto casino orders to pay taxes directly to FIRS. All right, which story are we starting with? Yeah, we'll start with Jam. So... Um, the JAM Registrar and Chief Executive, um, Professor Loyede, he's saying that uh, he's addressing some of the issues that have been brought up. So um, there are concerns that because of the strikes that have happened in 2020, 2020 for 10 months, and then, of course, we know the recently um, called-off one that happened for eight months this year, 
And for those who have written Jam, they are wondering if the admissions have been cancelled. He says that no admission has been cancelled for any session or for any institutions, except if the Senate of those institutions mm -hmm. say so. He explained that Jam is just like a coordinating centre to make sure that no student is shortchanged and supervises the um, ad, uh, admission process, the exam process, but um, that students have to now go to these institutions to confirm um, when their admissions will start running. He explained also that because of the, um, the strikes, it has affected the academic sessions for many schools. So some schools have, they're still running their 2020, 2021 sessions, some 2021, 2022, some 2022, 2023. So you need to go to those institutions and find out where you would fall, but that none of the admissions that have been um, licensed or validated by JAM have been canceled. Okay, so the prices within the PDP escalated yesterday, especially after Governor Autumn of Binary State insisted that the flag bearer of the PDP, Atiku Abubakar, must apologize to him publicly. Mm. He did acknowledge that, um, that Atiku apologized to him privately, but he said that would not suffice because he said that um, his people <clears throat> were stealing headsmen's cattle in Binary and he must apologize publicly. In the same vein, <clears throat> The former Ondo State Governor, Lucia Gumimiko, also rejected the offer to become the presidential campaign coordinator for Ondo State. said that he cannot leave Governor Wiki at this time, that he's, in, he's aligned with Governor Wiki's position that the um, IU must go, and uh, he would not accept that position as coordinator. So obviously the rift is within PDP is yet to abate, and we just yeah. hope that this can it doesn't somehow... doesn't affect them. I hope it doesn't affect the, 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 elections, the elections, because now that certain governors are refusing to support his... The House candidacy, is divided. Divided. Okay, yeah. another story in Nation? Yeah. Yes. So, um, you, we know that um, the Kogi State Government and Dangote Group uh, have recently been at loggerheads, and um, they've been fighting over the ownership of Obajana Cement Factory. And uh, the state government had, on October 13, 2022, giving the cement factory 48 hours to shut down following an order of the Kogi House of Assembly because they were asking them to present their papers to show that they actually own and they got the company from the right um, you know, channel. So uh, Justice Binta in Yako of the Federal High Court sitting in Abuja yesterday restrained the Kogi State government from shutting down Dangote Cement uh, PLC in Obajana. And um, they also stopped the state government from disrupting or suspending the activities of Dangote Coal Mines Limited and Dangote Industries Limited in Okaba, a local government area, and in Olamaburu, local government area, you know, respectively. The argument they had as a lawyer that represented the companies was saying that this will affect cement production in the whole of Nigeria and also affect people who are working in these companies. And so they must allow them to you know, finish all the proceedings before we now decide who owns the company and not, and uh, who doesn't own the company. But for now, the company must go ahead to continue its job while the matter is in court and being sorted out by the court and the government. Okay, moving on quickly now to the punch. 2023, Lagos, Kaduna, Rivers, Kanu voters top INEC register. Flooding. Experts warn of epidemic as corpses float. DSS arrests terror suspects. U.S. evacuates non-emergency staff. CBM plans Naira redesigned to counter counterfeiting kidnapping. FG announces preferred bidders for Abuja, Lagos airport. Wari eyes over $1.3 billion trade with South Korea. Tears as BRT vehicle killers, kills trader, an apprentice, and another laborer. And NDLA freezes 20 billionaire in socialized 103 bank accounts. Which story are we starting with? Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, Nima. Go ahead, yeah. Okay, so the DSS, um, as Department of State Services, have arrested two terror suspects in Abuja. And they said these two terror sus suspects are supposed to be siblings, according to the Punch report. Too. They're supposed to be siblings, and they were um, taken into custody on allegations of terrorism. You know that you know the U.S. Um, in the past 24 hours have issued um, terror alerts and um, advisory to their citizens in Nigeria, and um, that's all. They were supposed to be attacking it more in Abuja. So they evacuated their staff to safety. Yeah. Okay. They have okay. To, another to story. The flooding. Yeah. So we have. To potential crisis on our hands. So because of the flooding, and we remember the UNICEF had said that out of the 
Out of our 36 states, 34 were states in Nigeria affected by the flooding. And as a result, over 600 people lost their lives. 1.3 million people were, have been displaced. Um, over 200,000 houses have been partially or fully damaged. And um, what is of even greater concern right now is that we have corpses just floating, you know, mm. in the flood. And the Nigerian Medical Association, the president of NMA, was speaking that we need to do some, government needs to do something mm. immediately before we have an epidemic on our hands. Wow. He says, as of right now, many um, wells, you know, and sources of water are contaminated, especially in the Bielsa area. So government needs to do a lot about providing like toilets, proper health care facility camps where people can be. That's for those who have been displaced. And of course, we know if you have corpses just floating around what this would mean. You see, it goes back again to when we talk about this local government. I hate to discuss it. But you see, this is a local what are they government doing? problem. Yes. We have a budget. These are the things. Because a federal government cannot come, come and help you. Understand. Understand. You think we carry that will come and... Yeah. Yes. Ah. That's what, so the failure of the local government. That's the problem we're having in this country. Let me let you go. Mm. Just get on. A Go ahead. Let's another story. story. Yes. So uh, three persons were confirmed dead. Several others injured uh, Wednesday when a BRT bus rammed into a market fence at Alapmere <coughs> in K2 area of um, Lagos State. He said the driver was, you know, uh, driving with his uh, passengers, and then he lost his brake field, mm. and he rammed into uh, people who were trying to cross the road. There was a market woman who was just coming back from the market. There was an apprentice and a wheelbarrow push, and three of them died instantly. About eight others were injured. And so um, eyewitnesses were saying that the BRT in those areas have brake problems. They are always dragging the road with you know, commuters, that their brakes are always failing there, and the government needs to look into this. Since it's, um, the sure. BRT buses belong to the government, they must make sure that they maintain it so that we don't have all of this. My so they're actually private-owned, because they, are, they, they private give private partners. Private partners. Yeah, but they should be, yeah, but they should be, but they should be able they should to be, regulate yeah. and yeah. ensure that they are. Okay, let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still reviewing the papers. And I'll go to the story, uh, the picture story. Buhari's eyeing about $1.3 billion from South Korea. He is in South Korea and trying to woo investors to come to Nigeria. According to him, he would like them to invest in our oil and gas trade, manufacturing, ICT, creative industry, and cultural exchanges. I assured them. His administration has prioritized power infrastructure, uh, and um, they have also ensured that um, there will be about 25,000 megawatts of electricity by 2025. He also told them that as, as regards clearing of cargo, giant strides have been digitized for the processes to be fast-tracked so that the sea price will be expedited and all that. So he's winning investors from South Korea, hoping that they would indeed become partners uh, for us. He was speaking with his counterpart, Mr. Yoon suk at the presidential palace in South Korea. Any other story in punch? The Nima, you wanted the story? No, no. Okay, let's move on now quickly to the Daily Sun. Security agents raid Abuja Estate. U.S. asked nationals to leave Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Kano records another legal victory against the federal government. External debt rises to $40 billion in seven years, DMO reports. Catholic Church will mobilize effectively for polls, says Priest Association. Benue Kili's or Tom Fumes' fault article. Fuel scarcity will increase pump price between 195 naira and 200 naira, says Ipman. Flood destroys 80 billion naira transport from infrastructure. CBN to unveil redesigned 200 naira, 500 naira, and 1,000 notes by December 15th. And preliminary voters <coughs> register hit 93.5 million, says INEC. Which story was that? BC? Central Bank of Nigeria, yes, Mr. Godwin Imifile, yesterday uh, said that uh, they are planning to unveil a newly redesigned bank notes of 200 naira, 500 naira, 1,000 naira by December 15th uh, this year. So he was asking depositors to make sure that they uh, exchange their old currencies for new ones before January 31st. So they are going to, first of all, release by December 15th the new notes, and then we we'll still have the old notes work side no by sense. side till uh, January 31st. So one of the reasons they wanted to do this is the fact that um, they said 3.23 trillion of money in circulation, only 2.77 trillion 
um, only um, 2.77 trillion is outside the bank's um, um, system. Uh, system. It's in people's private uh, yes. houses and vaults. That they, uh, Nigerians keep a lot of cash at home. That makes up about 80% of money outside the bank's control. And so they're trying to see how these people can bring in all of this money because there's this, um, according to international best practice that we're always talking about, they're supposed to be changing the notes exactly. in five to eight, eight years. years, and they haven't done so in 20 years. Yep. So this is an opportunity to do it and ensure that they are able to, you know, give the um, Naira notes mm. more dignity. They also realize that a lot of um, uh, fake notes are available, especially from 500 uh, Naira to 1,000 Naira. This will also help clean out the system. Now, some you know people now will always come up with conspiracy theories. Say, are you sure mm. this is for the right cause, or you want to do it so you want to release money for politicians and big boys mm. at this time? Okay. But if they are going to be getting money from everybody, people that have money in their vaults, it's a way of pushing money into the banking mm. system. The argument is that the banks will have enough cash so that they can even give loans with little interest for businesses and all that. So money may just okay. slightly flow. Mm -hmm. Any other stories? INEC. Go on, Okay, so INEC is saying that um, they have identified 23 of their officials who have been trying, who have been attempting to register fake votes, um, fake voters ahead of the 2023 elections. Um, this was also in response to the coalition of united political parties that had raised alarm that, um, that certain members of, of a political party were trying to manipulate the voters' registers with fake names. So um, INEC responded to them and said that, in fact, as of now, they have 23 officials that will face disciplinary actions for um, as many as 40 attempts or more to register one fake voter. Mm. It's interesting. He also disclosed mm. that um, an estimated 93.5 million voters will tentatively participate in the general elections. Um, also, uh, it shows that about 12 million Nigerians successfully co um, completed the registration as new voters. The numbers, and then he says that uh, the rigorous cleaning up of the data using the automated biometric identification system, which they call ABIS, uh, also shows that um, over 2 million Nigerians have been identified, that, that registered were identified as being eligible registrants invalidated from the record because of double or multiple registrations under age persons and outrightly fake registrations. Right. It just says that there's a whole process, but INEC is assuring Nigerians that it's committed to giving us a free and fair election. It also said that uh, um, there's nothing um, that the bimodal voter accreditation system would continue, nothing will take that away, mm -hmm. and also the transmission of results in real time will be part yeah. of the election going forward, and I right. is doing his very best to give us a free and fair election. Okay, right. so new data has emerged on the effect of the floods that we've suffered over this period of time, and I like that the federal government, ministers for works and housing, Dr. Sundira Jifashola, um, alongside the minister for water resources, Suleiman Adamu, <laughs> humanitarian affairs, uh, Minister for Humanitarian Affairs disaster, uh, and Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Umar Farouk, and the Minister for Information and Culture, were briefing uh, press. And the Minister for Works explained that 154 locations with transport infrastructure worth 80 billion naira has been affected, impaired, or damaged by this flood. And, you know, this, of course, 612 lives, um, 1.4 million Nigerians displaced. Thousands of properties destroyed as well. And he, tr he also went on to absolve the federal government of claims, of blames. Nigerians have been blaming the federal government for not providing shelter for people to relocate to when they issued the flood warning. Mm. And he said that sometimes we, we be cloud these things. This, providing shelter is not the exclusive uh, prerogative of the federal government or exclusive duty of the federal government. They are state governments and their local government are totally completely agree with him because when the ecological funds come, they are disbursed to states. And, local and states government. are supposed to prepare. And, local government. and yeah. when you have disasters like this, you don't go all the way, way to, to the, the center. Exactly. You, the response should come from local governments and state governments within it. here, you know? We've and he, he, he took a holistic uh, reply. In the same report, you then you see the um, governor of um, Biosa State saying that our federal government have no... And I'm wondering, I understand. what happens to you the flood? Biosa is a flood-prone state. Simple. It is a waterlogged state. 
Ecological food disbursed to these states, exactly. along with all the excesses of oil production. What did, you do, to mm. yeah. what what did you do to prepare Nigerians? The importance of our local government because we can't keep going to the federal. At mm -hmm. all, people I mean, have budgets. Some yes, states can sometimes collect the money and they give to the local government. We would, they, they would ask for local government autonomy. Mm. But okay, until that time, mm. states are giving you the money. The money states is giving you. Mm. What are you doing with it? You're saying that the disaster this management uh, ministry did not reach out to relieve your people. Not. You, that you own the state, you've gone What's around the votes. Emergency? You've done, I saw the pictures of the governor yes. going around the state. Mm -hmm. These state are your own thing. people, your own blood, your own kit and kin. What, what is the you do? That you do? You. I was going to take the story about the Catholic uh, Church in, uh, I think it's in Calabas yesterday, was saying that they will mobilize lots of citizens to exercise their franchise in elections. According to them, they did the same thing to get them to um, register, to do their voters' registration, and they will also participate in ensuring that everybody within their own sect is able to vote. And I think that's a good thing. I think that all other religious bodies across board should do the same thing because mm -hmm. these are very important election, elections coming up and everybody should be able to get people to don't compel them to vote for your own candidate but at least get them to kind of, to vote it's for their conscience yeah. across, across yeah, board right let's move on quickly now to the vanguard how much time do we have not much time some INEX staff tried to enroll fake voters 40 times says yakubu banks tax remittances to federal government up to 40 percent Terror alert, FG, um, U.S. disagree on citizens' evacuation. <coughs> Stop the sale of TBS, Lagos um, tells federal government. PSN raises alarm over mass exodus of pharmacists. Court to federal government, return Kano to Kenya, pay 500 million naira damages. Court restrains Kogi government from shutting down Dangote cement. Asso strike, jam hasn't cancelled any admission, says registrar. Okay, which story are we taking in Vanguard? Okay. Nam the Kano. So yeah. the Federal High Court sitting in Omwahia yesterday ordered the federal government to pay 500 million as damages to the IPOB leader, Mazin Nam Kano, for forcefully abducting and renditioning him from Kenya June last year. You know, the first um, judgment that they had, he was um, asked to be released, which the federal government has refused to release him, citing excuses like he's a flight risk, he poses um, as a form of uh, security threat to uh, the southeast and all that. So, uh, traditional rulers and representatives of the clergymen in Igbo land disagreed with the federal government, said that he's not a, at a flight risk, he's not posing, in fact, he's going to be even unite the people of the southeast and calm them down from their agitations. So he went further, his lawyers, and slammed a fresh 100 billion suit against the federal government, which the judgment we saw yesterday. So it's been a back and forth. Now that this is the second judgment is getting to be mm. released and I taken see. back to his place, I think the federal government should obey the rule of law. Yes. So that it doesn't seem like there's, a, there's something else that they are not telling but us. But I also like the fact that he got a judgment in yeah. his favor. Because when these things happen in Nigeria, we should amplify it and yeah. highlight it. Because yes. people think Nigerian state has failed. Yes. Oh, yes. The judiciary is Everything not, is yes. bad in Nigeria. I agree. When you have a judgment where somebody who is obviously against the government mm -hmm. gets a judgment is a favor, it's a good thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we must be able to remind ourselves that, listen, our country is not failed yet. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's still... There's, there's not failing. There's still <laughs> hope. There's still hope. Mm. And, and it shows a form of justice and yes. equity no, happening if, if, here. If you must give anything to the government of President Muhammadu Buhari, yes. you will give that that the, the judiciary has continued to show their independence on that. Autonomy, yes. Mm. It doesn't, you know, meddle into... No, back in the day, you can find the government, government to, yes. to so, meddle so, into these things, yeah. but he doesn't. Yeah. In the same way, let's take me back the mm -hmm. AGF to so follow the rule of yeah, law. Yeah, they should follow the rule of law now. The Lagos State Attorney General of Lagos State has written to him to remind him that he went to court to, for the clause to declare the ownership of the TBS to be that of the federal government and that, you know, that matter is still in the court and they're, they're hearing reports that they're trying to concession the TBS to raise money to, to finance the budget mm. and that, that should be put on hold until yes. that court case is settled. Okay, I think that is all. Is there any other interesting story? Oh That's all we can take yeah. on front page review. Yes, when we return, we'll have our sponsor segment with iCreate Club. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. It's time for another I Create Club segment sponsored by Vitaform. Vitaform has been consistent in supporting the club's activities across 100 primary schools because they have a passion for investing in the next generation. Today on the show, we'll be having and speaking with Elizabeth, the 2021-2022 winner 
of the club's business plan competition. Welcome to the show, Elizabeth. Thank you. Yes, so before you go any further, tell us about yourself and introduce the person next to you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Elizabeth Mwakman. I am nine years old. I attend the Living Springs schools and I'm in grade six. I am the winner of the I Create Club Business Plan category sponsored by Vitaform Nigerian PLC. And here with me is Mrs. Gabriel, my teacher. Good morning. Great. Good morning. So before we go good morning, further, good to have you, you. Thank Gabriel. you very much. So before we go any further, we're going to show the 40 seconds clip um, of her, the, the fantastic job she's done. Watch this. Wow. So what were you thinking before your name was announced? Because the look on your face just was <laughs> priceless. I felt very excited. I felt very excited. It was a magical moment for me. I'm very grateful to the I Create Club and Vitaform Nigeria PLC for giving me the platform to express myself. Mm. Okay, so I saw in that video that you had your face on the newspaper. I think it was Punch newspaper. How did, yes. you, how did you arrive at that? I felt very blessed. I felt like a celebrity. Mm. <laughs> so I heard that this um, that your business idea was inspired by your frequent trip to the salon with your mom. Tell us about that. Okay, thank you very much. I can remember like yesterday, the first time my mom told me we were going to the salon. I was so excited because I thought a salon is a place where you can relax and have fun mm. while making your hair. But when I got to the salon, it was all different. There were adult size chairs, adult TV programs, and even adult conversations were going on. I was so disappointed, oh. as if that was not enough. When it was my turn to make my hair, the hairdresser pulled and pulled my hair oh. until I began <laughs> to cry. Then my mom intervened and said we were going home. That was the first time I conceived the idea of a salon only meant for children. Hmm, amazing. I'm glad that your disappointment helped you come up with a plan to have a children's salon. So can you tell us some of your plans, your vision for that, your children's salon? Okay. I thought, why can't there be a salon where children can relax and have fun while making their hair? Why can't there be a salon where children can be treated nicely and kindly while making their hair? Why can't there be a salon with children's size church, children TV programs, and where children can feel safe to interact with themselves? Wow. Then I said, I'm going to have a salon that has all those features. Well, I'm sure you're super, you're, you must be very proud of yourself. I can please. see your teacher has a basket that you yes, brought on. Yes, these are her stuff. Can you let us in on what is... Okay. What in is this it? basket, I have some things I will need to start my business. This is a hair dryer for drying my customer's hair. Mm. This is a conditioner for treating my customer's hair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well. This is a clipper for cutting my customer's hair. Mm. This is a comb for combing my customer's hair. Here also, I have a record book to keep record of my finances and the customers that come Whoa. to my salon. <laughs> Already. <laughs> money is on this one. I hear you have some flyers too. Tell us about the flyers. You can have a look at some. Please, you need to. Yes. Nice. Okay. Wow. So I, I made the design with my mom, and the printer helped us to print it out as a means of reaching out to my customers and letting them know about my services. Mm -hmm. You seem to have thought out everything for this salon. Right? Yes. Because I'm definitely going to patronize you, okay? Mm -hmm. But um, what is your uh, plan to stand out in the salon okay. industry? Actually, I haven't seen any around my area. I believe that mine is going to be the first around. Even if you will see some places that claim to be children's salon, they don't maintain children-friendly standards. But in my own salon, it's going to be a place with children TV content. That's why we are going to have a chaperone 
station to ensure that the selling is as it should be. In addition, I'm going to provide interesting books for my customers to engage their minds positively while making their hair. Those books, yeah. This, uh, this is an example of a book I'm going to have in my salon. In fact, my salon is going to be more than just a salon. It's going to be a place where my customers can bond, share ideas, and simply mm. be happy. Wow. Like, very, very commendable. Simply put, I have a dream of a world-class salon which will last for many years. Ah, mm -hmm. nice. so this is what very she nice. has here. Lovely. Well, a little bit you said that you wanted to be a teacher. Do you still want to be a teacher and how do you plan to combine this with your business? Yes, you're very right. I want to be a teacher when I grow up. A role, I think that a role of a teacher is to impact knowledge. So my dream is to take teaching to the salon by spreading nuggets of knowledge through books and other provided materials in the salon. Here I have some, some notes that will, that will inspire my customers to keep reading. There's no such thing as a child who hates to read. There are only children who have not found the right book. Oh, well fantastic. <laughs> so I heard that you haven't um, spent your prize money. You haven't used it to buy snacks and patents and stuff. How come? What do you plan to use with it? You're very right, Ma. I'm very passionate about my, my dream of a children's salon. So I have no intention of touching my price money until that dream comes to a fulfillment by God's grace. Wow. And to teach her. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ma. Thank you very much. I'm truly grateful. Okay, Elizabeth is a pupil from the Living Spring Schools, and this great achievement is a result of the hard work and contribution of all the staff at the school. At the Living Spring Schools, we provide rounded Christian education that enables our learners to excel using their God-given talent. We train our children to be best in class by global academic standard, where they can excel, become leaders of influence by themselves. Now, what we are celebrating today is creativity at its peak. And we are talking about Elizabeth's creativity. And this came out of her own personal experience. Now, like we have the midterm now. So whenever we have midterm in school, we give them what we call the midterm project. So while she was in grade four, the midterm project for that team was to design an advert for a sports event. And it was already projected on the smart board. But something happened immediately. I got this inspiration. So at this point, I'll give the credit. I'll acknowledge God at this point. It was not me. What I wanted them to do was on the smart board already. But the idea was now create and design an advert of your choice. I told them, you need to tell me the purpose of your advert, the message behind your advert, your target audience, your market, and the prizes you'll be giving out. You know, I was able to create this picture in their minds and you could see their eyes sparkling. I knew they understood what I was trying to say. So when they got home, they came back with amazing, you know, adverts. Hers was about a saloon, beautiful pictures. I had this other child, he came with robot, the other one with ice cream. And so I needed to publish them at the entrance of the school hallway. That same day, we had parents calling. Where is the salon? Because there was a contact on it. And the mom called me. And the mom called me and said, Mrs. Gabriel, what's happening? I'm getting calls. I said, yes, we've started business. So we are into it. And you know, that was in her grade four. So while she was in grade five, I was now the class teacher. That was when the iCrate Club came in and said for grade five, they're going to draw a business plan. I now told them, voila, no stress here because what we are going to do here is what you've done before right. in grade four. Right. So they should just go ahead. And she did. She was picked. We came for the presentation out of five schools. She was declared the winner. Fantastic. So we are truly grateful. Great. You're very grateful. Well, so that, that was, I mean, that's been phenomenal. And I congratulate you for the great job you've done so Thank far. Thank you very much. For um, it has been another inspiring session chatting with another product of the iCreate Club. Vitaphone remains the ever supportive sponsor. Uh, of the, every one of the club's nurturing activities, as has been mentioned in previous weeks. Our viewers get a chance to win Vitaphone memory uh, pillow after the show. For more information, visit the iCreate Club's Instagram page at iCreateClubNG for more details. That's all we can take on this segment. See you after the break. We'll be right back.
Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So to inspire heroism in young children, Indomie Instant Noodles, under the parent company Duffel Primal Foods PLC, instituted a corporate social responsibility initiative that seeks to identify and reward the positive efforts of children in society. Here with us today is Victor Olaiwala, who is the 2018 winner of the physical bravery category. And also with us is the um, group corporate commercial, communication. group corporate communications director. That is Mr. Timitokwe Ashiwaju. Welcome to the show. Thank you very Good much. Good to have you, sir, in our midst today. Thank you very much. So we've heard of your bravery and heroic story. Tell us a bit about when it happened, what age were you, and it started when it happened, and how old are you now? Um, it happened at the age of nine, when I was nine years old. Um, mm. Now I'm 19 years old. That was 10 years ago. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. So, okay, so uh, let, give us um, like a brief history of what happened um, and why you decided to do what you did. Um, okay, the story begins like um, I and my mom were coming from a church. So we were about to cross the road. Um, in the middle of the road, I saw a bus running directly to her. So, I had no choice than to run for it. I pushed her away, but it was too late for me. So I got hit by the bus. Wow, at nine. Mm. Wait, <sighs> did you think about it? You just nah, nah, to protect your mother. Protect mother. That, that is so beautiful to hear. But also, you did not go away on skate. You had some injuries. Can yeah, you tell yeah. us about that? Um, I had to amputate my left leg. Oh my God. So your left leg got damaged? Yeah. And it had to be amputated, and now you use a prosthetic. Absolutely. Tell us about the Heroes Award that you received, because I know you were recognized by Duffel Foods uh, Indomie Noodles um, 2018. Um, tell us about how that award made you feel, and how your family was able to accept or appreciate the award for, uh, yeah, to make them proud. I felt great about the award. I was very, very honored. Um, the award changed my life different ways. Um, my academics and my medical state, uh, my family was very, very happy and grateful for Indomie. Even before the award, how was your family's response to what you did at that age? I was here in the family. <laughs> the what? I was here in the family. In the family. <laughs> nice. Let's come to Mr. Ashiwaju. Tell us, why did Duffu uh, Prima Foods decide to start this heroic award? Look, thank you very much, and good morning, viewers. Uh, so, for us at Duffu Prima Foods, what uh, actually brought up the initiative was uh, in the year 2008, uh, having looked through, we did an environmental scan and we found out that uh, most people who have been rewarded or who have actually got this kind of recognition have been older people who, of course, while doing some of these things, they knew the implication and they knew that some kind of reward would come their way. Mm. And uh, we looked at that space and we looked at there was no uh, award or instituted for children <coughs> I mean, of this age. So we decided that we we're going to play in that space. And that was why uh, we started the initiative called the Indomie Heroes Award. Uh, so initially when we started, uh, we categorized it into three, yeah. which was uh, the physical bravery, the social bravery, and the intellectual bravery. Uh, like you said, Victor, uh, his was more of a physical thing. Mm. And that was why uh, he won a lot of stories uh, that uh, are being told behind the scene. Yes. So essentially, we just realized that there are so many good things happening in this country called Nigeria. So rather than continue to hear of those negative stories, mm. we decided that we're going to <laughs> identify and recognize some of these youngsters who have uh, gone out of their way to do extraordinary things. And that's uh, why the Indomie Heroes Award uh, it mm. is today. So, so what did Victor get from, uh, from the award? What exactly? Okay, so when we, ha I mean, just like any other person, when we had Victor's story, I'm sure uh, the way he has actually captured it, I'm um, not probably capturing well. So it was actually, they were coming from church, and uh, there was a car, or there was a bus with brake failure, mm -hmm. which ran directly to them. <laughs> Unfortunately, he was, I mean, he was behind. He knew that the bus would probably hit the mom first. Yeah. So spontaneously, he dashed down, mm -hmm. pushed the mom out of the way, but... Unfortunately for him, his legs were still behind, and the bus crashed him. He because was taken was from hospital to hospitals, and eventually they found out that, okay, maybe gangrene started setting in, and 
it was a tough decision for even the family. You know, why some of this? I mean, it was a tough decision because you know how parents or family would be like, okay, let's see if something will happen. Come let's, on. I mean, and with that waiting process, Makes there it was worse. more damage. Yes. And they had to eventually agree that it was going to be amputated. So, I mean, we got these stories. There was a panel of judges uh, who looked through some of these stories and they felt that, oh, it was worthy of uh, being recognized. And uh, that year he was, he, uh, he got one million naira. Aside from being brand ambassador uh, to Indomie, of course, aside from the product supports, and we also do what's called trail on pass winners, which is part of what we're doing here today. So from the time that they had won, I mean, we've never left any of these winners. So they're like part of our family. Mm, so, cool. and I mean, you can see 10 years ago, he's still with us. I mean, when he won, he probably would have been in secondary school. Now he's in the university. Wow. So Indomie never left you? No, no. Oh, no. fantastic. That's amazing. That's amazing. So tell us, are you having this Indomie Awards this year, or is there, is there, is there a version coming up this year? Okay. Tell us about it. Okay, so, I mean, just like you said, 14 years ago, we've been doing this year in, year out, and this year would not be any different. I mean, this will happen on Saturday 29th uh, of October yeah, 2022, and uh, it's going to be beamed live on all uh, TV stations. So that's what we expect. And this year... Uh, specifically, I can tell Nigerians that we'll have six winners, mm. Mm. and six of them will also, I mean, almost same category. So right. it's not as if we're doing four, second, third. Yeah. It's just six straight winners. We just said that we're going to reward six extraordinary children. Yeah. Maybe just for people who are just catching on to mm. this award, what do you do to be eligible? Sorry, not to be eligible, like... Um, have, do you have someone nominate a person or um, you look out for people yourself? Okay, so what we do is that um, we have a research company or we have people uh, who take this sort of research uh, around the country looking for this kind of extraordinary stories. Mm -hmm. And of course, people also submit these stories to us. I mean, we have a website for that. Mm -hmm. uh, the company's website, www.dofield.com. You have www.heroesofnigeria.com, yeah. which you can submit uh, your story depend. I mean, so it's a story. I mean, it's a continuous thing. So even as we are sitting down here, people are sending in stories, stories which will also be gathered. Eventually, we'll give these stories to a panel of judges who and will they decide. decide. Yes. Yeah, so and sift out. It's, it's exactly. So that's what. We, so so it's the final six we're going to be celebrating on on, on yes, Saturday. Yes, on this Saturday. Week. Yes. Fantastic. So beyond, I mean, apart from the six people, I mean. For them to have submitted or qualified alone makes them a hero. Yes. It's just that maybe they are not now in the front burner, but they are also being celebrating their rights. Yes. And can they also be considered afterwards? So, I mean, it depends on the judges. Like I said, we don't, I mean, for us, it's just to push the stories to the judges. They decide who becomes the winner mm. and we celebrate them. Mm. Okay. Well done. okay, we have to wrap up. So, how do you feel being uh, part of the Indomie family and Indomie hero? I feel great. I'm very, very happy about that. I'm part of them, and they took care of me with a lot of good times, and I don't want, I don't want to leave them forever. Uh, <laughs> I hope they don't leave you too. Fine, she's good. Mom is good? Yeah. Oh, fantastic. You got Are you glad? No, no, I'm serious. You're so an only child. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Oh, my goodness. That's, in fact, that should be highlighted also. Yeah. 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 Well done. Fantastic. So we'll be speaking with the group corporate communications and event manager of Doppel Premier Foods, Mr. Ashiwa Jutimitokwe. And also Olai Wala Victor, the winner of 2018 Indomie Heroes Award. Thank you, gentlemen, Thank for you. joining us on the show. Let's go on a break. When we come back, we'll now go to our Thursday gist. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So one of the hottest news in Nigeria today is about the paramount Lord the Oni um, of Ife, about who recently married the seventh wife. I think as this week was the seventh wife came in exactly two days after the sixth wife. And we've been seeing this in the, last, in the past few weeks where he's been marrying back to back. And um, although it is within his discretion to do, 
But it's something worth talking about. Why is the king marrying so many wives almost at once? If you recall, he had married one before who left uh, unceremoniously, I must say. The second wife who was also taken, um, um, that's the Queen Naomi, came in and she was very celebrated. Then at some point, she said she had left the palace and started posting stuff on Facebook telling us the issue. She didn't go directly to what happened, but she was, she was conveying the message that she wasn't happy. And many people interpreted that in different ways. Since then, reports had it that she went back to the palace and then she went out again, back and forth. And then, recently, we celebrated that the only finally married a new wife. A week or two weeks after then, we started marrying them back to back. What are your thoughts on this? Um, as I said, we're not trying to condemn anybody. We're just trying to discuss it and see what does it mean, especially where these women are aware that there are multiple wives. They are, they are going there knowing that they are number six, number five, number four, number three. What do you think about this arrangement? And how would you um, interpret this in your own view? You can call us on the number 0812705 0913907694. You can also tweet us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweets. But discussing this in different compartments because it's a lesson to women and to men alike. Some would say, is it not clear that women can actually survive in polygamy? Successful because these women, are, they clearly know it's a polygamous relationship and they're fine with it. Should women become to begin to accept the reality that polygamy might be an option for you to... to um, to appreciate when your husband says he wants to bring in a second, third wife. What are your thoughts on this whole arrangement? Let me, let me start with you, BC. <laughs> me, get. Oh, I said you, Nima. No, no, BC Nima. must start. No, BC no. must start. Okay, Nima, go ahead. BC starts. I'm just defending myself. Are you sure I'll not be a man? Like, I enjoy some of these specs, you know. Um, he's a king, and traditionally, this is the way to go. Because I remember before um, we had the uh, white people coming with Christianity and all that, polygamy was what um, Africans practiced, except for men who decided, I just don't have wahala. I don't want wahala. I yes. want to stay with one woman. A few men, even in those times, decided to stay with one woman, depending on how they felt at the time. Let me pause you. I'm told your mic is off. Let's go on a oh, break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still discussing the speculations that the Onyok Ife or by any tone, we'll be planning to pick up the seventh wife this week. But you're saying something yes, about so this. Yes, so I'll just try to be brief because of time. So I was saying that I wished I was maybe my next life I'll be a man so that I can enjoy some of these specs because I remember that uh, back in the days, uh, polygamy was what Africans practice, except as a man, you decide to just marry one. You don't want plenty wahala. But um, it sort of solved a lot of issues for men at the time. Uh, he helped them live longer because you have wives who are yes men our forefathers lasted long they had wives right. who were taking care the wives took Nothing. care of their children you know helped with the farmlands and all that so the stress was easier on the man at the time i'm just talking about back in those days and now and being a traditional leader the culture still demands that it's okay for you to have more than we need to fill up the palace, have people around to attend to uh, the different people who come in. So it's part of tradition. That one is good when you know that I want to get into a royal family. You should expect that you have more people join you. So the women know, sort of know what it entails. But I'm just very curious about the quality of this harem. The quality is impeccable. <laughs> As in different professions, they are intelligent women, they are made women. It's not like they brought you from your father's house and you don't have anything gummy in your body. So the, the, the sort of conversations that they would have, the sort of issues that they would have would be different from a regular man out there who just 
pick okay. women and marry them. Let me get your initial yes. thoughts on this. I'll, so, I'll come back okay. to you. Let's go, right. let me, let me, let me, Nima, okay. your initial thoughts on this fact that our, our, our king has finally got, is about to get the seventh uh, wife. Uh, in fact, it's until the king says stop. <laughs> Maybe they'll get to 100 because really, I'm not surprised. The only thing that pains me is that, you know, he leaves speculation so much. And for royalty, I don't expect that of royalty. So what you are is what you put your mouth. Exactly. When Queen uh, Naomi came in, there was one time we took one story of her complaining of, you know, too many women. But Asha, the drummer, is it? Ara, the drummer, had said that, you know, it's normal to have concubines, that those women were not... God, when the first queen left, the Bini woman, mm. that they were just no, normal to have women. The king was husband to all the widows. Yeah. That was how she explains. That all the women, it's about these ones that are coming, they're not widows. Mm -mm. You know, they, they were coming. And when Queen Naomi now came in and started having some of her issues too, she suggested that, you know, he, she couldn't find, she, throughout her pregnancy, she couldn't even see her husband, That's you know, and that there was so much <coughs> complexities inside the palace with the scam. After a while, you know, initially there was a press briefing from one person from the palace saying, it's not possible. They slept and woke up in the same house. All those things we read and then uh, not confuse us. A king doesn't approbate and reprobate. Mm -mm. Kings, they sit down. They, they basically without apologies. Mm. They, they do things, they do it assertively. Don't be going front, come back. Go. You are a king. If you want to make hundred, it's good. If the women are willing, try not kidnap person picking. But you know, okay. once you're doing that, do it. But this is a king that initially came out as like, you know, that he was going to have one wife. You know, he, he just did tell he, you looked, that. he just looked very. I mean, but I don't think he ever <laughs> made just like you said. He never came out in the open yeah. to make it look like, okay, listen, I'm going to have multiple. He's not he made it look as if he was dedicated to just one wife. And yeah. then, what happened? Why didn't he just keep the other lady in the house? Why did, he have to, why did the lady have to go? They were already yeah, in the, the house. The, the lady would determine if she, she it's something she wants yeah. to do. Mm -hmm. You're right. When he first came, you know, there was this uh, perception, which is he's a modern king. And so, with modernity, as we know, you know, monogamy is what a lot of people are practicing right now, even in Africa and, you know, so many other royal homes across the world. And... The fact that also when he ended up with Naomi being a prophetess, so, so this was supposed to be a powerfully spiritual, spiritual Christian mm. royalty. Yes. You know, it different. was very confusing. But, but we found out that this was not something that was working you know, uh, um, behind the scenes because we we'll go to Naomi because she was, she's quite vocal. She's on social media. She says mm -hmm. a lot and mentioned that the way he is to the public is not mm. the way he is behind Which, the yeah. scenes. So I guess he's decided, you know what, I'm taking off this mask and I'm, I'm just going to show you who I really am. I'm a man, mm. an African man, Ping. and I know my traditional rights. Okay. And it includes having a harem. But he also says that the reason why it's important is that there's just so many things to be done in the palace. And to do it the way it was insinuated, like to do it with one wife, didn't work out. It was Ping. good to have many representatives, mm. you know, to help work this out. So I'm saying, these things that they are doing, what and they not get uh, workers to do it. Like, like give us your list of, you know, <laughs> give us the job description. Do we have to marry you to do this Let job? Let me read this article because I'm just, he said, the only of if while making at this 45th birthday anniversary and 7th coronation anniversary, had clarified why he married Maria Manoko and the others. So he's telling us why he's having to marry multiple. Mm -hmm. I tried to read the, why the reason, and I didn't understand. Maybe you would understand. The only explained that he tried making some changes, but he couldn't. Maybe referring to the decision to keep only one queen mm. and have concubines. The monarch, the monarch said the, um, that the set of the traditional heritage of Ileife, this institution is bigger than me, mm. beyond me. Okay. So people in this palace are more than 800. Mm. They are close to 1,000. Mm. There are some people who have been here in the palace for 60 years. Jesus. Others have lived here for 80 years. Mm. In fact, there's one 100 years old in this palace. Mm. If I had my way, I tried to challenge it, but it blew up in my face. Mm. Mm. Thank God I'm still alive. Jesus. <laughs> it's an, it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> what may I, Wait, what I, I deduce yes. from this? So, yes. what I, I think, I'm okay. um, sorry, yeah, Miriam, I think uh, first of all, he doesn't need to explain. Mm. He's a king. Chest it. You're taking the decisions. Chest. With your full chest. Yes. You're a king. The, the um, organ organization 
allows this. The traditional institution, institution allows this. Why are you explaining to people? Are, are you doing it so that people will now say, hey, he doesn't want to, but he wants to? Where's are you marrying them, but you not touch them? Wait, see, calm down. Are you marrying them, you not touch them? Are you marrying them for the institution? You are going to be the one enjoying the things and the benefits from. So chest it. Pick them, sure. don't explain to us, we expect it. My pain is because <coughs> people have been asking questions. Uh, do we go back to polygamy? Has polygamy, is polygamy working for us? Mm. Because even the people who suggested monogamy to us Started have issues now. <laughs> yeah, the issues, give me the data. <laughs> the issues now are that the Kingdom monogamy is, is now moving to mm -hmm. a different direction. That's one. Two, every day we are hearing fight of side chick and wife. Side chick and on this table we discuss it. So the question is, are you sure people will not begin to think polygamy now? Would this solve the issues that we're having fights and knocking bottles? The other day we took a story, somebody knocked bottles, somebody's wife. You know, will that solve that issue? But for me, if it has to be polygamy, please make it, state it from the beginning as we are cutting. Tell me that I'm likely going to yeah. add more. In yeah. the, are you okay with of it? Course. But don't jump on me after a few years and right. say, I now want somebody right. else. Maybe okay, so for what I deduce from what he said is, for me, I'm looking at it practically, it's going to be very expensive to run a palace mm. with all those people in there. Yeah. And if we're going to do the, just the king and the one wife, you know, what mm. exactly is she bringing? When men used to marry many wives, they were not just pretty women sitting at home. It was economic, you know. Sure. And now we know how our traditional system works. It's not like they are directly plugged to the treasury. There's no money coming, you know, from mm -hmm. anywhere like that. So you need to bring people who can stand behind you. And these caliber of women that I see, these are women mm -hmm. that hold have their own money. Mm -hmm. So they will give everybody a constituency. You, this is your constituency. <laughs> from 600 to 800 years old, because this is you. Make sure that they are catered to, you know, things like that. I guess there are people who are going to school. It's a big family, mm -hmm. and they have to find a way to do it. They need to, um, it's a revenue generation Mm. sort of thing, you know, because if um, the man decides to stay with one wife, the king decides to stay with one wife, who would now do this job of raising money to run the kingdom? His family members. Run, the family members, you know. The so, royalty. Okay, so this, and, I, and I feel that, the, and I don't think that this is the only way to raise money, mm. I don't think, but if... If he has to do it quickly, this is the way to go. But going forward, so that we even have a more sustainable... Um, royal tradition. I just feel that we have to have, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong and I stand corrected. Do we have, those, do, do royal families have like businesses that they do that, that, that caters just largely for the right. royal home and the running of the I royal home? I like to believe that um, Buckingham Palace right. too had lots and lots of people to, yeah, but they have I mean, businesses. so they have businesses. I'm talking about the fact, do they need to have multiple wives to handle this? That, that's a question. Do you need to have, can, can there be a system that can function um, seamlessly so without that's what, having multiple. That's yeah, one. they have a firm. They call it the firm. That's the people that run the business of the royal family. So that's Which one person. Yes. What is the <laughs> Well, from what I hear, Question. I may be wrong because I'm not from the royal family, but what I hear, most of the lands in their country mm -hmm. is owned by, by the royal the family. Yeah, that one they pay the same yes, and the same. But how much of it do we have? We have mm -hmm. our royal families okay. with really large colonies, you mean? Let's go, yeah. now you know. Yeah. Let's go back, let's go back to these wives. I want, I want to bring the, the wife, conversation. I want, to come I, want, I want to come to it because mm. the king, as you said, <clears throat> can do his cabiosi, mm. right? We can't ask him mm -hmm. questions. Now, the queen, there are at least as of from, from this weekend, there'll be seven of them. Mm. What, how do they exercise their presence? How do they, how would we advise them if they were your sisters? What would you tell them? How would you, we don't want to be hearing scandals. Yeah, the ones that would advise us. Eh, I don't, I'm just saying, what do we say on this matter? We that we are monogamy. You know who I <laughs> yeah, monogamy. They say the, I don't know how to push it. The, something you see during daytime, you can't go and step into it at night now. What does that mean? Uh, they know what they are. They know. Mm. They the, know how to organize the, the waste mm. you see during, in the afternoon. Okay. You cannot walk into that waste in the night, say, because darkness don't come. You know to avoid that road. Mm. So now they are clear eye. Mm. They, use they take home. Mm. There must be some benefits, you know, some prestige. I know yeah. that, you know, um, women that have known married royalties, they married them. In no number, no, ma no matter the numbers that they were, because of the class and prestige that comes with that, that's where we are from, though. Mm. But you, this, this economic arrangement that you know a normal, um, mon uh, non-monarch man would do, is not something that is expected of royalty for me. Mm. That's where I see it. 
you know, it cannot be bad that your subjects, Bobani or the groups of people, will leave you to have to arrange an economic arrangement no, no, with no, women. No, no. Ne never. We kings married for pleasure. We have kings so mm. you know that is not the only we have kings that our kings when they step out, mm. the people of the kingdom are the ones saying my king cannot be looking less. Mm. So mm. people of Ife, let's ask you people a question. Oh. How can, what are you people providing so that your king is such is for, doing from a comfort place and is marrying women for pleasure? Because a pleasure king, they marry women. Yes, no, I, I agree with you. With you. Let's Hold remember, let me just add to this. Let's mm. remember oh, royal, royalty always marrying from royalty. Yeah. The queen that is coming is coming with her gold and her silver. Yes. Mm. They've always married because you also come from wealth yourself and you're bringing something to it the is, house, it is um, to the home, uh, the real home. If it is because for status. See, the king of my own kingdom, my own place where I'm from in Edo, when he married, when he was a young accountant, lawyer and everything in the UK where he run, ran his firm, he had a different tribe woman. The moment he came into royalty, they first of all gave him daughter of the soil. Then another king, Looked at him and said, No, the queen in the palace must be for so there's that there's several reasons, but for a king to be married for economic reasons, mm -mm, it's something confusing. is wrong. Yes, so no, because wrong. Uh, yes, the, people, so the wrong. people that whatever is coming from the soil mm -hmm. or whatever they have, and also is rich in gold. So, I spent so, so, yeah, no, so he didn't tell us. Yeah, so he didn't tell us he's he's marrying marrying for lot economic of reasons, yes, of course. Uh, but I know that. Uh, Kings, even from the time of old, married for those two reasons. Mm -hmm. So one could be economic, uh, not economic, status. not because they are, yes, for status. status. So royal family meets royal family. Yeah, yeah. There, another one could be for um, entertainment, pleasure. I just find this lady they attractive and I want to have this lady, whether or not she's from a royal family, so mm -hmm. to speak. But every kingdom has its resources. So I came from a royal family as well in Asaba. And I know that um, as at the time I was growing up, about 80% of the land in Asaba belonged to my family. We still have a river that they pay royalties to my father because he's the first son now. Sure. They pay royalties to him till today. Till today, we don't buy fresh fish in Asaba. Big, big fish they bring from my father. So today, we don't buy yam. There are some things we don't. So those mm -hmm. things come from the subjects uh -huh. and people who are farming in the farmlands right. and all of that. That equips the palace. So there's always food in the palace mm -hmm. and all that. So if another queen is coming with her own things, it's just additional addition. to what the kingdom yeah. provides. And I know that when they sell land, they don't just release everything. There are still forms of royalties that will be paid to the palace that helps in the running of the, th that kingdom. So mm -hmm. that one takes care of the day-to-day -day activities and finances and all that. So nobody's coming in to come and be hungry in the house. But as a queen, you self are expected to have your own. I'm sure that's why when you are picking, you now pick somebody that can hold her own and take care of her children and all of that. But these women, the way, the question you asked, how are they going to be sharing some things? Hmm. They need to also understand that that thing that they're looking to share, they may not see in a few days, in a few months, because aside from the fact that the king is marrying them, he will still have concubines. I don't know how God created kings, but there's always this large appetite for women. Anywhere they find themselves, there's always somebody there to take care of them. Even in the Bible, we saw the one that married seven, they had 300 concubines. So and I'm wondering, you know what you're getting into. Are you ready? Don't come tomorrow and report to us mm -hmm. that you have not seen him in three months or you were yes. giving birth, he was not in the labor room. Why... You will not have the privilege of a regular guy like us who will follow us to the labor room. You will not have that privilege. Mm. Are you ready for it? Mm. That's, a, that's a good question. The kind of marriage is and I'd like to open, I'll come to you, Miriam. I would like to open our phone lines because really the conversation is about the people. Let's hear your thoughts. The fact that our king, especially the uh, Oni of Ife, is about to marry his seventh wife this weekend. What are your thoughts on this? I'd really like to hear from our viewers. Call us on 081-270-536-8709-139-076948. Tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your view TVC Connect. We can read your tweet. This is a 48-year-old king. Is he young? He's young. He's hot. All, all his apparatus are still strong. Hey, Working. You did it. In full like, capacity. Hey. Are you there? <laughs> So marriages like this, I'm sure that they are not like our own domestic small, small mm -hmm. marriages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The expectations from a husband is not the same, you know, that you have for a king. Yeah. He may not be there when you're in the labor room. That's why they have all those women around you to surround you. A child, when is born in a royal family, is presented to the king. Mm. And we hear of some, when we hear some stories, then, then we hear of a really nice and kind king that was part of the process. Mm. But usually we hear that the king is seated at the stool and they present the mm. child to him. So these women... And I feel that these um, group of women that have joined the royal family now are more aware 
and I think they've been told upfront what the expectations are, yeah. and there'll be less problems. You Hopefully. know, the annoying thing is when you come here and thinking this is what is on ground, this is what is supposed to be, and then it changes on you. That's where you find a lot of problems. But here, I feel if you know what your expectations are, you know the days that you're meant to see him or the months you're meant to see him, you know what you're supposed to give yeah. and what you're supposed to receive in return, oh, wow. then you also know when there's a problem, you can point exactly where yeah, you're what you are saying. This is what you promised when I joined. You have not been here every Wednesday like you said you would, you know? Yeah. So for me, I feel that's I like why some of these marriages have worked because they know from the beginning Split. exactly what they are meant Maybe to Maybe I'll come back to that because give. I want to Hassan's call. I'd like to hop on that a bit more. Hassan, are you there? Good morning. Thanks for calling. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, Morayo in particular. <laughs> Me, I know you will not take this. You will not. I know very, yeah. very much. Now you will not take this. Okay. You see, we do respect to that throne, to the man on the throne. The man is enjoying himself. The way I'm seeing him, and separately, I'm seeing him as a man that wanted to spy his run away from our wives. Mm. Look, mm. this kind of thing you are seeing Morayo now. There is another lady now applying from a city to be the eighth wife of the only officer. A medical doctor. Look, you see this lady, a well-established lady, a career woman. They are getting married for, for their own interest, different interests coming in. And the way I saw the first two wives, when they got to the institutions, they were, not, they were now given the handbook of the traditional institution. Two of them ran away, the one from Bini, and the second one from Hulu. So these ones that are going in now, they are going with the mindset. You understand? To withstand the rudiment, the handbook of that institution. It's like what you see in university. When you get admitted, they'll give you a handbook. Contain the doors and doors. Those ones we are seeing now, they are big ladies looking for where to raise their head in. Mm. And they have found a place. <laughs> but you people, you see, we are doing the same thing. Very interesting. She says. Oh, we lost Hassan. Well, I think I got the point. But I think when the Queen died, um, Queen Elizabeth died, it kind of brought to the fore culture, tradition. Mm -hmm. of the British people. And those of us who are not very familiar with, these, with, with, their, with their way of life and all that, we're fascinated mm -hmm. about all we saw. Mm -hmm. And I think this marriage of seven wives, of this marriage that our king is having, is an opportunity for us to repackage our traditional store, to present it and, be, and, and accept it as that is what it is. Mm -hmm. And then celebrate it and say, you know, okay, yes, these wives, therefore, we, we, don't, we, don't, we shouldn't condemn the actor. Oh, he married her. You know, yeah. go all around town. We're, we're seeing lots of messages. You, you know, yeah, being our, the king, what's wrong with him? I think it's time for us to see it for what it is. Mm -hmm. And then make it, and, and, and then present it to the world. So that it's something that it becomes our culture it's and our tradition. It it's, that's how it's supposed to be. No, no, like Africans across the world, I don't think we shy away from polygamy when no, it comes no. to our royalty. No, we are some, some people, and yes. Some people, yes. The pre the, the pre the way he present, presented himself. And the way it was done, the way it is going around. I remember there was one Oba in Edo then who was driving through the university, uh, the state university in Epoma. I saw a girl in hijab and he, he sent somebody to ask for her family and everything. And she said, I'm not interested. She walked away and said, ah, I'm call her and talk and ask her that the king is in the convoy and I want to know who her father is. And she wanted to continue Bugaya, to pick her and put in the car. Immediate. Abduction was a form of marriage. Oh, yes. Back then? Yes. Back then, yes. They, this thing I'm telling you happened in the 2000s, yeah. early 2000s. And when I heard I was like, oh, I'll trade my father. I said, keep quiet. <laughs> Doesn't make Later, it right. auntie. No, what is right? Is no, 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 don't use what is right in their standard. No, no, no. I'm telling you, you don't know your law. Even your book of the book. Law. 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 I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you true. I'm telling you, 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 I
Her father received the bride price. Simple. Oh, by say Lenny. Oh, by she be say Lenny on today. Okay. So it's the manner, the way, the apologetic way. Let me discuss. Do it. Let's discuss. I'm coming. I'm coming. I want to finish this scene. Okay. Because these women were seen. All of them are holding NGOs on behalf of the army. Some of them. You, I, I hope you've seen that story of some of them holding NGOs, the clinical aid, working in the office of the army before this whole consolidation of mm. marriages. It's like, let me just redress this talk talk. The king, you know, they fear, you know, they said he does what he needs to do. That's why you're king. But should we debate Bessele? And in, in this 20, yeah. oh yeah, we're in the well, Be very careful. Bessele means that you just take the, you abduct a, a woman. Mm. You better, you better be careful. Where are you? Hey, right? Let's discuss the Bessele. No, they're, they're, okay. we're, we're living in, in, 20, mo in modern, 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 modern world. Can, yes. can, can the king see you now and Bessele you? You won't accept no. that. No. Also, hey. the Oimbo kings, they used to they behead their wives now that they were not happy with, but they will so not be behead today. today. Yes. So there are some things we will drop. So we should review it. But yes, but you, to see, you, you see the problem. Yeah, you, see, you see, I think the problem also with this particular story is that we expected, we, first of all, I cannot even remember if it was the royal, the um, royal firm itself mm -hmm. on just Nigerians mm -hmm. that because he came and he was young at the time and he's Christian, we painted a picture of what we expected him to be, That's of what true. he should be. Probably the guy was ready to continue in tradition, but all of a sudden we're hailing this new brand on me that Who's is different. Us. Exactly, that is different from everyone. But there's a system on ground. Yes. And if you're going to be part of that system, for it to work, there are some things that have to work. And as he has just told us that, see, I tried to do it one way, it did not work. We need wives. We need wives to take mm, care of all the constituencies. <laughs> so the truth is, when someone now Chai. is being crowned or is approached to take the seat, the you person also cannot is. come and say, see, right. I'm coming and I'm doing it so differently. Then three years, five years, ten years down the line, you say, ah, my ancestors, <laughs> what they saw sitting down, I did not see when I was standing. <laughs> when you take the call, yeah. Chris, That's the point. Chris, Chris are you there? Sorry for keeping you. Hello, Chris. Yeah, good morning. I'm sorry, go good ahead. Morning. You're live. Okay, good morning. I just want to chip in <coughs> one or two things. Yes, please. To the discussion. Well, I, I thought everything uh, go around when it happened during the time of Queen Naomi. You know, uh, to my own view and my own opinion, uh, the Yoruba said, uh, That's, but again, there are many ways the king can get married. They can gift a king a wife. There are some people, they will just come, they will see somebody, the king, the king will not even be aware of it. They will just say they brought a lady as a gift. So that will happen. But if you check the present only of affair, the, the issue is just, uh, during Naomi, I thought the, the king fell in love with Naomi, with Queen Naomi. So to say, then uh, I think the 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 uh, on your officer, the throne itself is is too big for someone to like fell that kind of maybe the woman the. Mm. Mm. All right. This, uh, so okay. wait, his predecessor, the king. Had multi, had multiple wives, mm. but out of but and some some I interpreted that out of respect for these women, he didn't marry them all almost all at once. What's the they came in years Did after each other. Them? What's so, the so that that's do that, these women know that, the, another way, that's the another way to look at it is that is it not almost demeaning for you to just say within one or two three weeks you are marrying seven women? Why you, know, you, you cannot even physically right. attend your own wait. Wedding. So Fela could he married how many? No, yeah, yeah, you know, say that they condemn him. But that's see, 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 see. Mm -mm. The fact is, there's a marrying of multiples. However, you choose to do it. Are we supposed to be questioning? It should be two years. Who, who puts the law? It should be two years or three years or Would four you years. Like it where somebody marries you today and tomorrow you marry somebody else? What do you consign me? I don't know say go marry another person. No, but not immediately. You know mean. Not the same thing. You're not even doing your honeymoon. People with the, which honeymoon? Do yeah, kings do honeymoon? He could, the, I mean, honeymoon just means... Honeymoon. I mean, the honeymoon, 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 honeymoon here honeymoon means name. private time with your husband, which you just recently married. Yes. So, you know, they're not even doing The kings of old did not the have king. that time the to do honeymoon. Please, my name is Lang, my point. They didn't have that time to do any honeymoon. You can finish marrying today and you go to the war front. 
Ah. Is it because there's no war now going on now? Now we honeymoon now. Please. No, you can now see, no because she had the time to do it does not mean it's the norm. Everybody must go through that honeymoon phase. You know what you're entering. If you get the time with him, fine, enjoy it. If you don't get it, you move on. Go and start doing your activities. When I finish the war front, I'll come and I'll attend to Wherever you. That's it. That's one. For me, this best we're talking about, we should review, started from even... Bible mm. days, mm -hmm. you know. God said, I would, you are, you are, you are, you are looking for kings, Abby. You don't want me to be the direct person in charge. I will give you kings and they will take your wives. They will take your daughters. They will take them by force. It was instituted before we started having kings. And if you look at the history from time to time, a king can point. I remember when we did MBGN uh, 2005. So we came to visit, uh, was it MBGN? Yes, MBGN. We came to visit um, the Oba of Benin. They warned us. Don't look at the Oba's eyes, oh. Once he says, I want this person, yeah, that is it. <laughs> we were so scared. <laughs> Guess what? The Oba came, looked around. They're not even fine. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, it was a relief to us. That's the tradition. Are you going to be questioning? Oh, you know, at the time, kings were more superior. They had authority. It's just modernity now that, you know, sort of um, takes away that power because the governments are now in charge. But at that time, do you want to question the king? Do you want to question the sort of, uh, would I, I don't want to use the word jazz, the sort of medicine that comes out of that place. Ah. If they say they want oh, you, no, you can't. Your, even your parents will say, please they be go. going. There's nothing we can do about this. Mm. So it's the tradition. The kings now that are very educated may not want to. They would want you to come because you want them. And these women were not best led. Even the country's constitution will not allow them. The best led like that. Even in England, even not in England, even the constitution. Even the constitution of our country has limited the powers of the traditional system so much that he will not even be able to do that. Also, I think we're missing the point of what the expectations of women who marry into real families are. They are not looking for a honeymoon and come and touch my face. And kiss whatever. me, good morning. They are looking for status. Mm -hmm. So they provide, see, whether we like it or not, from old, um, marriages that in, involve the royal families have always had to do with building, um, solidifying empires, mm. solidifying wealth, and things like that. And so that queen will come with her different things that she would add to the kingdom. But also that this, um, uh, this being part of that harem and being part of the um, royal family also gives her some sort of status. She enters the market, now everybody's bowing before her. She has some powers herself. And so for these mm -hmm. women, it is not that, yes, you may be able to hold your husband mm -hmm. and be dancing in the garden. She may not be able to do that with the king, but she's sitting beside him on the throne. She's got and power. She has some influence. Mm. And for some people, that is what they need. I have my money, especially with this caliber of queens. I have my money, I have my education. Got my power. I will have my children. I will take them to the school that I want and everything. And then I also have the respect yeah. of these people. In the society. And that's enough. But but how is the close. king? Yes, Neymar, how is the king going to manage all this? You'll be fine. Ah. You'll be fine. You'll <laughs> manage be fine. all this work. Please, the, I want to understand. The women, I just hope that they understand. You know that our constitution has modernized some things, but it didn't touch some things. When uh, Bashidra did die, there was this rumor that the women could not remarry. Yes. And when we debated it here, somebody corrected that that is sacrosanct. When we wanted to apply it, when they are laughing, that they said, no, this is Zoyo, it's different from Ife. That they are laughing, they will do their rights, and then the women can then go their ways. These ones that they know that they don't have rights to remarry you. Oh, they don't have rights to remarry No, are never. You sure? That's it. Are you sure? Yeah, that is it. Now. Nobody will I take you. I just confirm for you something that we no went man to will take you. Your that's view. it. Your view is saying yes. So if your for life. now marries, so wants to marry. No, he can't. Nobody will let you. That's it. Once you have been picked by the king, whether you he dies, have you can't you have sugar boy. No, you can't have. The I person will die. That's how. So hey, somebody said don't something here. Wait, so I'm telling you, you traditionally, you know, traditionalist. Wait, wait. I want to take this message. This would be the ration. You know, you cannot come and go and help yourself. You won't try it. I the person will die, yes. I can't even... So please, Miriam, uh, somebody, <laughs> Latin, they said, Miriam, leave constitution. Constitution, no understand <laughs> jazz, you. Let me take this call from London. Yeah. Good morning, Femi, are you there? Mm. <laughs> yeah, good morning, You're live. Go ahead, please. I'm a first time caller. Welcome to the show. Okay. Um, I think uh, reality is kind of. Um, can't hear you. Um, can you hear me now? Hello? Maybe the volume is low, but go ahead, please. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is that um, royalty is kind of um, an institution whereby it's different from every other marriage is whereby um, an individual can do what, what he wants to do. 
So, right, right from the olden days, the kings are allowed to have like several um, wives, like five, then there about. Um, but because of nowadays now, that's why we, we tend to question the king now. But we're not supposed to do so because following the culture and the tradition, I think it's allowed to have as many wives as possible. Yeah. He's been on the school for mm. seven years, and um, I would have really thought that in seven years, you could have you, could have, you would have married all these women, maybe once a one, mm -hmm. once a year or two years. I think it's with some kind of respect to the woman to feel like okay, I have the king, you know, or comes or somebody sets up as an institution. Bringing lots of women within a short space can be very confusing, Wait, can be very for scary who? for the women oh. because they're coming into a new space. Do they look no. confused? <laughs> Please, Morayo. wait, uh, Morayo, please, 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 please. Do they look scary to you? No, do they not, look not scared entered. to you? Do they, they look, not, not enter. Do they look, see, see. They wait, you ask the question yeah. initially. Well, stop saying this wait, now, this you ask the it. question I initially. Making a valid how, how, um, does, how will the king manage? Mm. The king will be enjoying because those women right now will be in a subtle way, if they are sophisticated, competing to mm. be his favorite. That is enjoyment for him. Mm. Mm. Already. This Why women, are you looking at me like that? Of course. Don't let me forget. Ah, okay. This. Okay, what I'm trying to say is that, uh, Mariah, you're right about just marrying them back to back to back. It comes across as insensitive. Mm. Whether you like it or not, mm -hmm. I don't care. Polygamy yeah, no or monogamy or serial monogamy. There's something about thinking I was chosen because, you know, time was taken yes. and oh. I have enjoyed you yes. and I'm enjoying you. Yes. Even though it's a polygamy, there's time to yes. want to be with you. you said We're not talking of human being feelings. Mm. There's something that just makes it yeah. Did they complain? Did they complain? Yeah. 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 Thank you, that's the word. They did complain. Yeah. Yes, these yeah. women that are coming into the palace have always been in the palace. Hey, one if we fall, yes. From the back door. Hey, are you hey, yeah, I'm fine, 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 You see, they're not just coming. They're not just coming. What they are getting is legitimacy. They are getting for this Wait, when Zainab was the first queen, she left unceremoniously. We don't know what it can happen. Everybody started to speculate, speculate. He said, now, see, Naomi do. And when Naomi left, drama, because Zainab just left without explanation. Naomi left and left a few suggestions. And now we are seeing the king consolidating. Mm. Uh -uh. Consoli, consoli. <laughs> but we are respectfully here on the We have to go I think uh, congratulations yes. to the king. Mm -hmm. uh, we wish you the best. And also congratulations to the women. Um, they're finally queens now. And we only hope that um, yes. the stool is... Um, oh, yeah, I'm worried. Is, yeah. Yeah. You know, what, I want to you. what I would like to see, this hope like to see how time. they carry on. Yeah. You know, we have always debated this, you know, feminist monogamy thing, and let's see how modern Polygamy. women, yeah. modern self-made yeah. women will carry this God bless song. you. Yeah. I think I like that. So we're very Montanos. expectant <laughs> of these modern women. Yes. We're very expectant <laughs> of the modern queens, and we hope that the, the stool of the only will be enhanced mm. with these new beautiful queens who are mm -hmm. educated and exposed, and we hope to see that they can help us amplify the culture, mm. the Yoruba culture. Let us see it in its best. Mm. You know, with this emergence of, this, of, of these queens, mm. let us see how you can help us rebrand re, re the stool Enough of the Enough consign us, so let them live their lives. To help us appreciate the, yeah. the king better. Some people laugh. That is all I can take on today's show. <laughs> this is where. Why do you so best lay you? God forbid, but... Yeah, story. <laughs> oh, you throw it at uh, Yes, now where they want to <laughs> Tomorrow. You know, they almost best one of our reporters. Are you seeing that? The Lagos State King, the mm. Obakelu. He was with the video, one of our reporters, when it was doing an interview for him, for, for him mm -hmm. and he was just looking at me with my best He was from royal family, never. They will lock you up with the You will, you will beg.